Welcome to the Wander Learn Show. This is Francis Tapon. I'm here with Rick Gazarian. How are you, Rick? Francis, I'm excellent. Thank you for having me on. And you are in the capital of Armenia, and almost nobody on this planet knows where Armenia is, let alone the capital. So quick education. Sure. Armenia is located in a region of the world called the Caucasus. It's a small landlocked country of 3 million people surrounded by Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. Now it's 3 million people, but don't you have like four or 5 million now that all the Russians have gone there? There has been a large influx of Russia, Russians into Armenia since the start of the war. And then a secondary wave, I guess, when the mobilization was announced. I've heard 150,000 people, but I don't have good numbers on that. Okay, got it. So what I want to talk to you briefly today is about the Extraordinary Travel Festival that's going to be happening in the middle of October. Tell people about it and why they should attend. Yeah, thanks, Francis. The Extraordinary Travel Festival is what I am calling the largest gathering of avid, accomplished, and adventurous travelers. So if you fall under any of those adjectives, or you would like to meet people who describe themselves at that, this is a great opportunity to come to Armenia on October 14th. We're gonna have about 25 speakers over three days. And of course, as important or possibly more, parties and dinners at night. So a great opportunity to network, socialize, see one of my favorite cities, and be inspired to travel even more. How much does it cost? Well, it's $399, which includes all the speakers for three days, the big party and the big dinner. But for your listeners, if they use the code FT, FT yes. they will save $50. So that's $349. And that will be good through September, uh, excuse me, October 6th. Right. And by the way, I'm not going to get any commission out of this wonderful promo code, but I will be speaking there. So anybody who wants to hear me speak, I'll be talking about my adventure in Africa, my five year nonstop travel, and then tagged on our three years of not so nonstop travel um, all over Africa. And that will be the 40 minute presentation plus 10 minutes of Q&A. And that's how many speakers are you going to have right now, including? It's it, give or take 20. Um, I, I haven't counted the precise number, but mm -hmm. it's three full days of speakers, including at some times there's two simultaneous sessions going on at the same time. So there is a ton of content and um, yeah, I mean, there's so many speakers that I'm personally excited to be meeting in real life for the first time and hearing about their travels and their experience as well. Um, so it's going to be a great opportunity. Who's the the number one like keynote speaker that we're going to see? Yeah, um, I, I consider I consider the speakers my children. So there's no number one speaker. I mean, uh, and not you know not just saying this, I mean, I am so excited to see you speak. You were on my podcast, Counting Countries. I think we had probably close to a three hour conversation. It could have been six hours. It could have been nine. So, I mean, there's people like you that just have such unique and amazing travel experiences. Um, I'll point to Charles Veeley, who's been called the father of systematic travel and the founder of most travel people who has done things that, you know, really have not been duplicated. We have Slavic Mutari, a half Kenyan, half Polish man. He's been to every uh, country in the world twice. We have Per Besson, um, who's been to every country in the world. He's a polyglot. He speaks eight languages. I could go down the entire list, but go to extraordinarytravelfestival.com, look at the speakers, and I mean, pre prepare to be wowed. It's an awesome list of people. And also, I think going to Armenia right there is a, a wonderful adventure as well. A lot of people haven't been to that, the Caucasus, and that would be a nice, safe place to go. Now, some people might be concerned for safety, either for because, you know, Russia is relatively nearby and all these Russian immigrants are kind of pouring in. And then there is that little minor uh, scuffle that's going on between Azerbaijan. So why don't you make people get at ease? You've been already there for a month now. 
And so tell us about the situation from a security perspective for those who are worried about that or maybe securing a room. Maybe they think, oh, will there be any hotels rooms left and that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, well, I've been coming here for over 20 years, um, sometimes as long as four months on a individual trip. Um, speaking of just ordinary crime, I view this as one of the safest cities I've been in, meaning um, you know, there, there's a very fun restaurant bar scene, meaning I've walked home a number of times at 1, 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. Never have had an issue. I know many single women who have come to the city as well. Um, just a very safe, welcoming, hospitable country. Um, speaking of Russia, I mean, there's, I don't think there's any security threat from Russia itself. Um, that war is whatever it is, uh, you know, several thousand kilometers away, if not more. There are Russian soldiers actually in Armenia, but they're used as a tripwire, sort of similar to the U.S. soldiers in South Korea. Right. Um, so we do have some neighbors um, that have historically have not been that friendly to Armenia. That is Turkey on the west and Azerbaijan on the east. And those Russians are here to, in essence, provide, provide a security blanket over the country. Uh, several weeks ago, or probably three weeks ago, um, in the southern part of Armenia, there were some artillery attacks um, coming from the east in Azerbaijan. Um, I can tell you there's, I mean, I mean, in essence, it appears to be ceasefire. Nothing has happened since then. And the parties, Azerbaijan, Armenia, et cetera, have gone back to the diplomatic tables. Great. Yeah, I heard about that quick skirmish that happened, which just flared up and then it kind of quieted down right away. So and, and just, to add, just to add on, sorry, um, you know, that's a four hour drive from Arme uh, from Yerevan. Um, while everybody was you know, very upset emotionally, um, you know, the restaurants, the bars, the streets, Right. Um, it was business as normal during that 24 hour flare up. Right, right. And that's great news. And I encourage everybody to go. You don't need a visa if you're coming from a Western country, either Europe or the United States or Japan. Yeah, the, the vast, vast majority of um, nationalities do not need a visa. As you said, you can go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They actually have a very good website. You simply type in the pull down menu of your country to double check. So it's very straightforward. You'll get stamped in once you come into the airport. In addition, there's no COVID restrictions, meaning you don't need to show a vaccination card. You don't need to show a PCR test. So it's business as normal. You can pretend it's 2019 here. Exactly. And last question for me, for example, I want to go to Georgia afterwards, after the conference, which is the neighboring country to the north. Uh, I imagine that's also pretty, the border's open and it's again, a visa free entry for people with uh, high income country passports. Yeah, I'd say, um, yeah, Georgia's even, I, I hate to say it, is even more open than Armenia. I think you're entitled to a 365 day visa yes. on arrival. You don't get, I think you get 90 days in Armenia. It's a well trafficked border. You have a couple of different options. You can take a private car slash taxi for $90 or less. It's a good five hour drive. Um, you can take a shared taxi. You can take a marshuka. That's the little code word, code word for a big mini bus. Um, you can take the train and you can even fly. So you get a ton of options and a very, very well trafficked border uh, connecting the two countries together. It's extraordinarytravelfestival.com. And use the promo code FT, my two initials, Francis Tapon, in order to go check us out. Middle of October, come there on the 13th of October or 14th at the very latest. And uh, you'll get to hear me speak and a bunch of other people that are even better looking than me. Not with that beard. 